Welcome to Teams Tuesday. It's December the 15th, 2020. It's 12.15 in New York, 5.15 in London, 10.45 in Mumbai. We have a great speaker, Elizabeth Kuloko, who's discussing OneNote and Teams, your secret productivity weapon. I'm your host, Peter Ward from New York City. Stay tuned for the next 45 minutes. It's Teams Tuesday. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you are joining us around the world. So I'm Lisbeth Goloka Green. Thank you for joining today's meetup session. In the time allocated, I'm going to be sharing with you some tips and tricks about Microsoft OneNote and Teams to make them your secret productivity button. OneNote is a note-taking app that allows you to take all kinds of notes. Think about it as the evolution of your paper notebook to a digital notebook. It's part of the Office 365, and it has existed for more than 15 years, but a lot of people don't know about it. When I refer to OneNote as a digital notebook, it's because it provides a single place where you can gather all of your notes and information with the added benefits of having a powerful search capability to find what you're looking for quickly. Plus, it's easy to use. You can share in your notebooks so you can ma manage information overload and work together with others more effectively. You can store your notebooks in the cloud and access them from any device. So how do I use OneNote? I use OneNote to stay organized, to share content, capture content, and to share data. And what do I mean by that? So how do I stay organized? I use OneNote to take my meeting notes that I create online, my to-do list. If I have one idea, there is a quick note in OneNote for major trip. I create a OneNote notebook. It syncs all the time in real time. I also manage tags. And I also have my, for my emails, whenever there's a to-do that I need to do, I transfer it to OneNote and I can use tags with that. It is fully integrated with Outlook. You can use tasks, email, and meetings. And you can also print documents for review in OneNote. You can also share data. And what do I mean by that? You can use onboarding notes for your new hire. That's what I've done. You have, of course, your to-do list. You can store, everything is stored in the cloud. So it's the great thing is available. You can start taking your notes on your desktop and then finish taking off on your smartphone or your tablet. You can co-edit with other people and all the data are synced at all time. And sharing notebook is very easy. And you can also capture content. And what do I mean by that? You can add screen clipping, you could bookmark web pages to read later, you can capture audio, video, you can also scan your invoices or your bills, and you can copy the text directly from the picture in OneNote. You can also add file printout like whiteboards, documents, PowerPoint slides. You can take voice notes on your smartphone, and you can also record audio on OneNote. And if you have any insights, and ideas, you can put all of them into OneNote. These are all the data that you can store in OneNote. So why should you use it? OneNote is great because you can have different notebooks. They open at all time. It has a great searching feature and it's synchronized in real time. There's no save button and it's a great integration with Outlook, OneNote, PowerPoint, Excel. There's also record. You can also record also and in OneNote and it's cross device because if you save your OneNote in the cloud, you can access it from your smartphone, your tablet and any other devices. So there are different versions of OneNote. So the OneNote desktop version was formerly known as OneNote 2016. It's also part of the 2019 package and it's also part of Office 365. This is really the full uh, feature rich desktop app. Then you have the OneNote for Windows 10 and it's available through the Microsoft Store. It's the lighter version of OneNote, although all of the updates for OneNote are now on this app. 
You also have OneNote for Mac and OneNote for the web. And you also have OneNote on your smartphone. So I recommend that you download the app either on your iOS or your Android or if you have a Windows phone. So the anatomy of OneNote. So OneNote is set up in section and pages, kind of like a three ring binder that you had when you had in school. So you have your notebook and it's, those are like the main files, the virtual folders for OneNote. And then you have the different section. Those are like the tab dividers. This is in OneNote as well. It enables you to create like pages related to a particular topic or project or phase. You also have your section groups and they actually are optional and it's very useful when you have a lot of section, you want to group them together and you have the different pages and within those sections, you have pages where you can put your note, your list, your planner. So when you're in OneNote, here you have all your notebooks and then from there you have a different sections and you have a different pages. So how is OneNote different? The notebooks are always open. You don't have to close them. There's no need to close. There's no need to save. And there's no physical pages, kind of like in Word, because you can write anywhere in OneNote. So the, the digital pages are infinite size. It's not really done for printing. It does have a limited formatting option compared to Word, but if you use macros, and I'll talk to you about that later, then you'll be able to format your OneNote. So of course, when we talk about Microsoft Teams, it brings together the full breadth and depth of Office 365. It provides a true chat-based hub for teamwork, giving like executive assistants like us the opportunity to create a more open, fluid, and digital env environment for organization. So the best practice guide will, when you in Teams, it's important to create a collaboration space for you, for your executive, for your colleagues, and your entire organization to access the chat, files, calendar, and all kinds of applications that make your company work run effectively. So with minimal time invested, you can easily set up your Teams channel to help you reduce time, alleviate the need to work across multiple devices, and to help keep the entire team in the know, and to take notes also in Teams. OneNote was really the first nat natively collaborative tool. It's really a must have to manage meeting minutes and there's no need to manage access controls. So when you have OneNote in team, it's really awesome. How do you add OneNote to your navigation? You click on the three ellipses, you will search for OneNote and then you click on add and then you will pin it to your taskbar. So from there, you'll have access to your OneNote at all time. So right. how do you add OneNote tab to your channel? You just click here on the plus sign and then you select OneNote. And then from there, you can select the notebook. By default, it will take the notebook that you have on your OneDrive. I don't like to post the channel about this tab. I'd rather you know, post it myself to the team with the link. And once you have added the OneNote, you can just click on it, rename it. So you can give it a name. I'm just gonna call this training notes and then click on save. So then you'll have your OneNote tab directly in your channel. And the great thing about this is you can also open your OneNote either in your browser or in the desktop app. And you can also view all of the, your different OneNote notebooks or your different sections. Okay, I have a question that's come in. I experienced this. There's a lot of challenges I find. My OneNote is like a complete cluster bomb. And this, this is one that's saying it's a complete mess. They're saying with all the OneNote, they can't find everything. Yeah. It's what's your recommendation to like have good OneNote organization? My recommendation is really to have one, have a personal OneNote notebook. OK, have one for your work. But if you have one for your work, make sure that you organize it. Like I have in my OneNote, I have one separate OneNote from each of my managers because I have their flight details, I have their preferences, we have our to-do, when we have, we have weekly to-dos, we have those in there. Also, if you're planning, you, if you're working on a project with other people, then you should create a, a separate OneNote notebook, but it's really up to you how you wanna, you know, how you wanna organize it. I know that sometimes it can be overwhelming in the beginning, but you know, start really small, start with like your personal notes and start, you know, adding like sections and pages. And afterwards, you won't be able to go out without OneNote. I've been using OneNote for about 10 years now, I have an eight-year-old daughter and she also has one note. Okay, another question that came in. Do you use like the Galaxy Notes and like the pen on the Galaxy Note? Does that work well? Yes, actually I have an iPhone and a Samsung Galaxy Note 10. And it works well because I've added OneNote directly on my Galaxy Note. And the great thing what I can do is that I can open up OneNote directly on my smartphone on the Galaxy Note and take written notes directly on there. So that's really useful. My other recommendation is that you should add sticky notes. So sticky notes is kind of like Post-it. It's an app that you can install from the Windows 10. If you're using Windows, I think it's also available on Mac. 
But the great thing is that if you're using OneNote on the mobile, you can have OneNote and your sticky notes combined together. So now I'm going to talk to you briefly about managing your meetings in Teams. So it's great that when you're organizing a meeting in Teams, it's important to, you can schedule your meeting directly from Teams or you can do it in Outlook. But it's important to prepare your team workspace before people join the meeting. So how do you do that? So here you are in your calendar and you just write the meeting name. I want to call this Teams Training. You can add the required attendees and you can see that they're both free. So that's the beauty of the calendar in OneNote. I also have the suggested time, but I can also go to the scheduling assistant to be able to schedule an appropriate time for a meeting. And then I can add a channel because I can, if I want to notify everyone in the channel, I can add the channel. I can also add directly the agenda directly into that meeting invite. So like here it is the agenda and then I click on send. And then to prepare the meeting, I just click on the invite. And then from there, I can see, I can even check with all the attendees prior to the meeting. So that's a really cool feature. So if you need them to prepare anything, you can just send a chat directly to them. I can also add a file that we're going to be sharing directly during the meeting. So I can add that file before the meeting starts. So you just go and share your file. I'm just going to replace that because I've already added that somewhere. Of course, I have all the details, the scheduling assistant, it's very helpful. And there I can take the meeting notes, but I don't recommend using that because when you're taking the meeting notes there, it's actually using a wiki. So the only advantage of using a wiki is that you can add mention people, but you will not have all of the features of OneNote. So that's why I don't really recommend the wiki. You can also have a whiteboard. It's great for brainstorming sessions. So you can actually prepare your whiteboard before the meeting. So you can like use a pencil and you can start writing whatever you want to write. And you can also have a post-it note and then you can ask different questions or you can really start preparing the brainstorming session directly in your whiteboard. You can also add a text box. First, I want to add a OneNote, of course because from there I can relate, I can correlate my OneNote notebook directly and select a different section where I want everyone to take the meeting notes. So it's not only me taking the meetings, it's everyone inside of, that's invited to that meeting. So I can re just give it a name and then click on save. And then for me, one of the most important feature right now is actually forms. I can actually create polls before the meeting. So I just click on the plus sign, click on form, click on add. And then from there, I can ask directly my question. So sometimes it takes a little bit of time. So you have to be really patient. Where, where is it saving this information on the form? It's the same thing in Microsoft Forms. Okay, and then that email gets emailed out to the person. Yeah, but the thing is that right now, I wanna be able to add a, a poll directly in the meeting. So I'm just gonna click on create new poll. Okay. And then from there, I can ask the question. So I'm just gonna ask a simple question. Where are you joining in from? And I'm just going to add the different options. So I'm asking the attendees, where are they going to join in from? So I added the different answers. I have the possibility of creating that poll and then everyone inside of that meeting can edit the poll. I can also request that the answers are anonymous. And then once I launch the team, I can just go to the poll, okay? And from there, I can click on launch the poll. And then from there, the attendees will be able to respond to the poll. So in that meeting that I had created earlier today, I asked them where they were joining in from. Some were joining in from Europe and some were joining in from the Americas. And I was able to see directly the answers to the poll. You also have the possibility of adding your OneNote directly from Outlook. So all you have to do, this is the invite I sent earlier from Teams. So I just opened it up. It's called Teams Training. I just click on meeting notes. I have the possibility of either taking my own notes or sharing notes with the meeting. So what I do is I click on sharing notes with the meeting so that everyone can write down their own notes in that one note. And then once I click on that, I arrive this page open right here. And from there, I can actually select directly the section and the section page and I click OK. I have to make sure that I always verify who has access to the selected notebook. And then from there, it will add a link. So this is the link so that when the attendees click open up the invite, they'll be able to view the link by clicking on the view link. So they can either access it via the web or they can access it via the desktop app. And the great thing is that when I go back to OneNote, I'm able to have the attendees list. 
So it added a page in OneNote, and you can see it will add the invitation message, the list of participants, and actually add a check mark next to each attendees. And once I'm finished, either if the attendees have access to the OneNote, they can revert to that OneNote, or I can email the page directly to the participant if they don't have access to OneNote. You can also connect your OneNote web to Outlook. So you just go to OneNote, and you can just open up your OneNote, and then you can add the meeting details directly from OneNote via the web. Or you can also connect your Outlook from Outlook the web. You can also connect your OneNote notebook from Outlook via the web. And also, if you're a big fan of SharePoint, you can also access your OneNote from SharePoint. So you'll just have to connect to SharePoint. And then on the left-hand navigation bar, you click on the notebook, and then you'll be able to view all of the different notebooks that are saved in SharePoint. What I meant earlier when I said, if you're taking notes using the wiki, the meeting notes will be saved only in Teams. The data will not be added to OneNote. So I really recommend that you add a OneNote tab instead and take all of your notes in OneNote because the great thing is that you can take your notes offline. You don't have to be in Teams to take the notes. So that's, and you have all these added features of OneNote. Feature that people really don't know about is that there are team templates incorporated in Microsoft Teams, and you can also have OneNote incorporated directly in those templates. All you have to do is click on join or create a team. You have different options like manage a project, manage an event, all of that. Once you have made your selection, then you'll be able to see, like for example, if I select manage a project, the great thing is that I will have a OneNote that will be created for me. They will have four channels and four apps, one of which is OneNote. And once that your team is ready, you get a pop-up message that says your team is ready. I also wanted to talk to you about, for me, I created an onboarding and guidelines directly in Teams. Let me show you that. And as you can see from SharePoint, I was able to add a spaces page. And so whenever there's a new hire, instead of sending them an email with everything, I've actually created this welcome on board a spaces where they can just click on it and they'll have access to all the different information that I've stored. They will also have access to the org chart and they also have a, like a welcome a video from our CEO. And they also have a, like all the guidelines, a word document. I have created this on SharePoint. So I have a world clock time and I've added all the different uh, list of countries of which I work with and also added the weather as well. So that's really easy. So my boss have access to that as well. So instead of having to search in different places, they have everything in OneNote and in Teams. So let me go back to this. Let me go here. So there are some things to remember. I'm, a, I'm an avid user of the OneNote desktop app, but it's soon going to be end of life. I think it's in 2023. So now all the new features of OneNote are available via the web. The only issue that I have with that is that there is no automation tool on the web version, such as OneTastic. So what is OneTastic? OneTastic is actually a macro. So you can download that directly from the internet, OneTastic, and you have like macros for OneNote. So you have macros like you have like a OneNote calendar where it has summarized all of the OneNotes that you have created over different years or month or day. You also have in the OneTastic, if you have like me, I have a lot of sections in my OneNote and I won't be able to organize them very quickly, then OneTastic is the way to go. I also have templates also in OneNote. There are some few templates in OneNote, but I prefer the one at OneTastic, so I use that. It's also important to remember that you need to train and persuade people. Like I remember my exec uh, didn't want to use OneNote before, and I was able to show him the benefit of using it, and now he can all live without it. So I want to share with you some tips for OneNote. So one of my favorite tips is using Office Lens. So Office Lens is an app that turns your smartphone into a pocket scanner. So you can scan your documents, you can scan also business card and transform them into V card that you can save in Outlook. And you also have great ways that you can copy documents. You have pictures of a document or a whiteboard, and you can copy the text directly from that picture directly in one minute. Another useful feature, I know that a lot of EAs, we have a lot of post-it notes all over our screen. I would recommend actually on your keyboard, just click on Windows N, that's for if you're using a Windows PC, and you will be able to access your OneNote as a sticky note. And you also have an app called the Sticky Note, but if you click on Windows N, you'll be able to have like sticky notes. It will avoid you having all these like sticky notes all over your screen. So if you want to get OneTastic, that's the website get onetastic.com and you have a, all a list of like hundreds of macros so you have to make sure sometimes your it help desk may not allow you to to have 
add-ins. So if you're not able to access it, you'll have to check with the IT, but it's free. And also you can actually record the meeting in OneNote. So the great thing about recording is that, let's say you are in a meeting and the meeting lasts about one hour and you're taking all your notes and you're taking action items. So let's say the word action item is mentioned at the 25 minute mark. The great thing about recording is that it will take you to that 25 minute mark in OneNote and the audio in OneNote. So before you proceed, of course, you have to inform the people that you're recording them. <laughs> okay, a couple of questions here. Yep. Okay, how do you create a world clock? Do you have a blog or YouTube link? Uh, if the person can send me, I will share my contact details. If the person can send me a message and I will show them how to do it. I created that using SharePoint site. When you have a poll, how do you control duplicate entries? Perhaps voter, voter fraud, as I may say yes. in America. What you will need to do, you will need to go actually to the form. When you go to like office.com, you uh -huh. will need to connect to your forms. And then from there, you'll be able to click on the settings and there's an option where you can just ensure that people only answer once. Okay, last question we've got at the moment. Okay, the interface of OneNote 2016 is different, which you mentioned. Also, some of the features are missing on the Mac, like the OCR as well as online. Any yes. not Teams is different from Mac, Linux yes. and PC so as well. I agree. So my recommendation, because as you know, the Office Suite, there's about 30% less features on the Office Mac. So my recommendation is that you use the web version. When you use the web version, you will have more features than you have on the Outlook or the Office for Mac. So use the web version, basically, to be able to access more features. I see you talked about the Office Lens. Can, yes. And you can say if the OneDrive client offers comparable lens features. So with the lens, you can scan in a receipt and yes. go into OneDrive or OneNote. Yes. I, 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 might, I might be wrong here. A lens is the lens. Where the destination is, it depends on where you choose. Yeah, it, it depends on where you choose. You have the possibility when you are scanning a business card in Office Lens, you have the possibility of either saving it in OneNote or saving as a PDF or sending it by email or saving like a V card in Outlook. You also have the possibility, if you don't want to download Office Lens, the great thing that you can do, you can download the Office app. So the Office app is, you, it's available on your desktop or your smartphone. And in the desktop app, you actually have Word, Excel, PowerPoint on the go. So on your mobile, for example, and you also have Lens. So you have Office Lens integrated into Office apps. The new comma video is a video you create or is it an app? No, it's actually a video that was created, actually added directly into the spaces that I actually, the video that was created was actually uploaded in stream. So when I am in spaces, I actually, and I, since I created spaces using SharePoint, I was able to add the link to the stream directly in spaces. But what's the difference between sticky notes on Outlook and OneNote. No, so sticky notes are not on Outlook. The sticky notes actually, it's just like posted notes. It's just like an app. So you have sticky notes in Outlook, but the thing is that when you close Outlook, then you also close your sticky notes. But when you have the sticky notes app, then you have all of your sticky notes remain open until you close them. That's the difference. The other thing is, well, you have a surface and you have yes. a pen. If you press the tip on the pen, it opens up OneNote. Yes. But it also depends on how you configured your pen. That is true. In OneNote, you have templates that you can, let's say you're out of ideas. The great thing about OneNote is that you can act, you have templates that you can use. And I have used some for the meetings, for my meetings, and I've, you can customize them and add them directly by default in the section in OneNote. You also have a great possibility of managing tags and searching uh, tags as well. Just some few team tips. One of the great thing about Teams is that you can use notification and priority access. What do I mean by that? It's important to set your notifications in Teams. Let's say right now you are in a meeting, everyone is you know chatting and you're seeing all of these notifications. 
There's no need for that. So you can actually go and customize your notification in Teams. Regarding the priority access, it means that let's say your executive has set his status at do not disturb. You have the possibility of adding on his account, you can add yourself on his priority access so that even if he has a do not disturb status, he can still receive messages from you. You also have in OneNote, you can save and pin documents also. And the great thing about save, kind of like you can use the saving documents as you, your to do. So you save documents and you're able to view them later to be able to action item on them. There's the WhoBot. A lot of people don't know about the WhoBot. The WhoBot is that you can just ask the WhoBot different types of questions. And you can just, all you have to do is search for it. You can pin it like I've done. And you can ask the WhoBot different types of questions, like who is the manager of this person? Who reports to this person? Who knows about this? And who has messaged me about that? So the WhoBot, it's kind of like a Microsoft Assistant. Also the command bar, there is a shortcut when you're in Teams and you on your keyboard, you click on control plus period. You have a list of the keyboard shortcuts. If you're using a Mac, you just click on command and slash bar, I think, yeah, to be able to view the list of all the keyboard shortcuts. A couple more questions coming in. Right, how is Microsoft proposing to mitigate the functionality that will presumably be lost along with the desktop version? I find OneNote for Windows 10 annoying, let alone being forced onto the one line, onto the online version. Unfortunate thing is that uh, me too. I'm not. A, I only use the Win the OneNote Windows 10 one because I have a Surface Pro and a stylus. So I think that now I think Microsoft what they're trying to do is to move everyone to the web version. Why is that? Because they want people to be able to collaborate. So soon the desktop version of OneNote, unfortunately, I think as of 2023, it will be end of life. So yeah. they're moving you slowly to the web version so that you can, it's easier to collaborate. So I think that also what they're going to be doing is that they're going to like features like one plastic that's not into uh, OneNote. They're going to slowly move all these features that are in the desktop app to the web version. But also the web version is also great because there are some features in the web version that we don't have on the desktop app. Like for example, there's dictate, meaning that you can dictate messages um, directly. So instead of typing, you could just dictate your message and it will type, it's using artificial intelligence and it's typing the message for you. So these are, so the web version of OneNote is also very great. Somebody's like talking about, has there been any commitment to reaching the party before parity for end of life? I doubt there's been commitment. I think functionality been missing, but of course there's more functionality as you just said. Yes, and also, but I know that there's at Microsoft, you can actually vote for features that, you know, that you want to add in different apps or whatnot. And I know that, I think it was a year ago, two years ago, they wanted to get rid of the OneNote desktop app, but so many people, so many users voted to keep it on, so they've kept it on. Okay. So let's see what happens in about two, three years. Maybe they're going to keep it, who knows? Yeah. I've just posted in a OneNote web clipper extension, which is in Chrome. So that allows yes. you to cut web pages exactly. and stick them into OneNote. Yes. Someone's saying they find it difficult to, to do the mass ribbon on OneNote. Can you just stay where it is? I don't do it very often, but let me see. Let me just add a page. OneNote being a calculator. I don't use calculation very often, but I think that if you do plus 125, let, for example, you do add and you click on the space bar, then it does calculation for you. I agree. I'm aware of this feature, but yeah. if you use it, anything which is serious calculations, I'm going to use Excel or my phone. Yeah. <laughs> But also, I think there's a feature that people don't really know about is that you can have also, let's say, I'm just putting random text, okay? When you have a table in OneNote, you have the possibility of converting that table as an Excel spreadsheet. So a lot of people don't know about that feature. So you can actually start your calculation in OneNote, but you can also and create a table behind it and convert it to an Excel spreadsheet. So that's another way to go. What my, my recommendation is also before you actually you run your meeting, it's important to do a task talk call. So how do you do that? You go to your the command bar here and just click on forward slash call and you'll be able to test all your microphone, speaker, camera and network. So before so that's a really great feature before you, you test out your meeting. Also, you have the possibility of transferring calls from your desktop to your mobile phone. Let me show you how to do that. So you go to the OneNote app. Let's say you are on a Teams on your desktop. You can go to your app and then you click on add device and you're able to transfer seamlessly your call from a desktop app directly to your mobile phone. So let's say you have to go run an errand very quickly and no one is aware of it. 
So that's a cool feature. The most important feature that came out last week is the breakout rooms. Everyone was waiting for that. I know that it is really a long awaited feature in team that has arrived in my tenant last week and as well as others. So breakout rooms allows you to assign participants and online sessions in up to 50 rooms where they can chat, share content, use a whiteboard and to gather more together mode. And you can also record each breakout room sessions for the delegates. What's your power bomb tip here that you use all the time in OneNote? I would say manage tags is really my power bomb because I've created actually tags for myself and from my boss for each of my execs. I have three of them. And the great thing is that for managing tags is that we each have our own tag and I am able to view at a glance what each of us have to do. So really using tags in OneNote is my one of my, if not the top feature in OneNote. Elizabeth, been an absolute pleasure. Thank and, you so um, much for inviting me. Thank you very much. Really, really fantastic uh, knowledge transfer here. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.